Okay, hi. Uh, morning. Alright, so today's chapter, right, we are going to look into another form of critical theory, or an extension or an evolution from the classical uh, critical theory, which emphasized full and full what we call as economic determinism, right? Last week, I mean, for the last chapter, we have seen that how the classical Marxists have positioned uh, their perspective, their ideology, based on uh, the relation between the means of production, right? Uh, we have spoken earlier, right? Uh, uh, you try to Google for means of production, right? What it means, means of production, mode of production, and relation to means of production, right? Previously, uh, you know, the classical Marxism, Marxism emphasized that whoever owns uh, the, the, the means of production will also uh, dictate the mental of the, the, the mental production of the masses, right? But however, we have uh, later on, right, uh, Frankfurt School, right, based in Germany, and later they shifted to New York, right? Uh, what is their conception of uh, communication uh, technology, communication industry, right? The society, how do they look? Whether they are still uh, economically driven, right? Whether they are still saying that or whether they believe that or uh, propound that economy is the sole and uh, foremost criteria to influence the society or what they, what, what they, how and what they have departed from and to. Right, so, uh, right, classical Marxism, right, Communist Manifesto, we have Manifesto, right, Manifesto, right, argued that means of production determines the very nature of society. Yeah, we have covered this, right. Uh, in capitalist capitalistic system, right, profit drives, uh, sorry, profit drives production and this dominates labor, right. Uh, every production, right, for instance, we take IKEA, Amazon, and everything, right, it is the profit that drives them, right. Uh, and uh, what do you call? Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, and this dominates labor, right? Well, labor is the force that is used to create profit, right? You are spending time, you are investing your uh, sweat and time, right, to work in an industry, and then make sure the production is uh, guaranteed, right? Mass production or limited production, so on, right? Without the labor, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, profit might not be achieved, right? Uh, so working class groups, according to Marxism, are oppressed by the group in power who benefit from the profit, right? Uh, the wealthy, rich individuals, right? The owners of these factories, these industries, are benefiting from the profit, right? Uh, you have, let's say, you are putting in, uh, 50 ringgit and then you get an amount of 100, right? Maybe out of 100, maybe you would be paid uh, about 10 percent, 10 to 8 for salary, 10 to 20 percent. The remaining 30 percent is what we call a surplus, right? Uh, after covering the uh, expenses and everything and so on, right? So you have uh, what do you call uh, the, the, the rich, wealthy individuals would press uh, the labors so that they would keep on working for the employers and so on. Right, and then uh, all institutions that perpetuate domination within a capitalist society arise from this economy system, right? Uh, what do you call it? Uh, perpetuate domination like religious institutions, family, right? Uh, state apparatus, state uh, institutions, right? Everything is functioning within a capitalist society to dominate uh, the majority so that they remain powerful, they remain rich, and so on. So only when the working class rises again, the dominant groups can be liberate can be uh, can liberation be achieved, right? Uh, if not, uh, the, the the dominating classes would not simply hand over freedom or pay rise and so on and so forth to the working class, right? Uh, okay, we will move on to the Frankfurt School. Yeah. Right, so Frankfurt School grew out of the Institute of Social Research, which was founded in 1923 at the University of Frankfurt by Felix Wilk, right? Uh, social and political philosophical movement of thought located in Frankfurt, in mind, Germany, right? Uh, so these are the basic, or uh, the prominent scholars in uh, Frankfurt School, Horkheimer and all those people.
people. Right. Uh, so dialectic environment that right, focus on the commercial media argue that as a consciousness industry, the media willingly manipulate passive and relational public. Right. Uh, bearing in mind that uh, Frankfurt School operates in a, in a time when the Nazi uh, German was uh, very prominent, right, recruiting a lot of people. Right. Uh, and and are there other superpowers in the country? In a country where what do you call, a lot of uh, superpowers, right, a lot of major countries were using mass media to To disseminate their message, the ideologies that the ruling class wanted by like conscripting uh, members for war and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so basically, they argued that uh, masses are passive, right? They don't have the ability to uh, negotiate the content, they just uh, receive everything and everything that has been stripped by the media. Right? Which, me uh, which media encourage people to think about their life. Huh? So realize that culture plays a role to shape collective society by introducing certain values uh, without depending on each family unit so we both will have to turn to the government. Uh, basically, anti nazis adopt it as under power and these are the contacts of uh, uh, group of monks that realize that culture plays a role, right? Uh, how, how do I put it like, let's say, in a society now in Malaysia, right, like let's say for example, the anti ISIL right, not necessarily that is the uh, major sentiment, but it is being hyped, saying that the Malay power is being threatened, right, Malay will lose their sovereignty and so on, right, so it becomes uh, a collective culture, right, the fear is somehow collectively disseminated so that everybody would feel that they have to defend their uh, personal rights and so on, right? Uh, so uh, the, 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 the society would shape the general values and understandings. Right? So moving from Nazi Germany to United States, Frankfurt School, percent rise of media culture, right? Film, popular music, radio, these are forms of mass culture that was uh, beginning to emerge or was gaining popularity. Right at that point of time. So people were seen as to be emulating or learning behaviors, attitudes, uh, their thoughts are shaped by this mass culture. Right. Also to be remembered that uh, most of this mass media was also largely concentrated in the hands of state owners. I mean state Nazi, like Nazi, uh, Hitler was using the mass media films and so on. Was I think a lot of films in uh, film industry and during the war in the United States were very much uh, Germany, right? anti-Germany, right? pro-US. Uh, if you could see these movies like Casanova and then there's a movie about the director of Casanova recently was released in Netflix, I can't remember. Uh, later I'll share with you, right? Uh, you can see how uh, the state intervenes right, in the filmmaking right, to make sure that there's nothing anti-state, anti-war is being propagated, is being saved in the film, right? It's a form of ideology, right? Um, right? Focus more on the social influences that perpetuate the not simply economic operation, but social operation. Uh, beside economic operation, there's an economic inequality, there's uh, low wages, the pay is not enough, but social operation, the sense of uh, the effects of dominations, of the institutions in society, right? Maybe gender, uh, what else? Uh, race based gen uh, ethnicity, because they are basically coming from uh, German, right? Persecuted, uh, the, the persecution for, on the Jews, right? On the LGBTs and so on was uh, very prominent during that time. So they develop a critical and transdisciplinary approach to cultural and communication studies combining political economy, textual analysis, and analysis of social and ideological effects. Right. So, uh, a concept of culture industry, which emphasizes the process of industrialization of mass-produced mass culture and the commercial imperative that drove the system. Right. A culture industry where 
uh, you know this is also the time of industrialization right uh, people have moved from uh, rural society from agrarian agrarian uh, beast uh, society to industrial society people who are driven to urban cities and so on right so they have mass produced culture right it is an integrated culture people from different parts of the uh, state different parts of the world consuming different cultures right uh, which is driving the culture industry right uh, they argue that marx saw the economic sector as a preeminent but it not the dialectical process such as political politics religion and mass media which not new marxist argue could not be reduced to something determined purely by the economy right this is the uh, contrasting idea posed by new marxist saying that uh, institutions like political institutions religion mass media have their own uh, have their own uh, uh, capabilities right to induce or can be used to retain power right how the uh, people in power can can manipulate them for their own benefits right so this agreement between marxist theories and frankfurt school adopted marxist theory for analyzing the culture and society right uh, the members of frankfurt school did not agree with marx there is a need for political revolution right uh, because they view high culture such as music art and literature is invaluable and they, they denounce the existence of music art and literature right uh, they emphasize the important to maintain a high culture right uh, do if you see the high culture like like right suits right uh, uh, what else uh, going for opera at that point of time right what is regarded as high culture right uh, they say it is important to maintain that although it creates a diversion the a disparity between who can access high culture right only the rich and the powerful could be enjoying the high culture wearing suits and so what about the poor right so that is the uh, differences of opinion between uh, neo marxism and classical marxism right uh, in other words the revolution in the mass media the culture are defects within the context of industrial production in which the commodities of the culture industries exhibited the same features as other products of mass production commodification standardization and massification right uh, so they promoted and celebrated high culture but denigrated mass culture like in sense right if you see the movie titanic right there's a two distinction uh, the the one who sits on the upper deck right the rich ones right the, the most influential in the society right their culture is totally different what we can also call as high culture the way they dine the way the etiquette of dining is very much different and their conception of enjoyment right is very different right the idea of enjoying uh, sipping wine and so on right but however in, con- in contrast uh, those who reside in the lower uh, sorry, in the lower deck right uh, is to be uh, is it, can be considered or is to be considered as the mass culture right it's totally different right uh, if you have time try to watch i mean even you have watched before try to watch again by imposing uh, or using a, a critical perspective right frankfurt school be a cultural artifact having their own integrity and should not be used by the elite to enhance their personal power right they see that they are cultural artifacts like music and arts and so on can be used widely can be uh, used as a mass culture right in, instead of using for their own personal bubble right they criticize mass media as cultural industries industry that turn high culture for consumer commodities sold for profit right uh, where the films arts and everything has been used uh, to uh, to, uh, to 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 be sold right Uh, as a commodity right to generate profit with the mass culture is identical due to one of the by the industry right uh, this could arise from the idea where the studios were dominating for instance one brother said that it is the uh, few other studios <coughs> that were dominating the industry and then they were making profits while the the majority of the workers in the area were still in struggling poverty 
I stated that people who are in control of the media become powerful through monopolistic practices, right? They control the media, right? So they determine what kind of product will come out and so on and so forth. And then uh, uh, monopolize the productions. Therefore, whatever profit is being made by these uh, owners, right? Uh, multiply not only their money and also their power in the society. Right. So it had the function of providing ideological legitimation of capitalist society and integrating right, how the mass media, according to uh, Frankfurt School, is using to legitimize capitalist, capitalistic society. Right. One is saying that people have to work hard, right. people have to always struggle right, to make their ends meet. Right. Being rich is a process of hard work, right. people are being poor because they are lazy. This kind of ideological legitimation. Right. And then came in pop culture. The American pop culture was as highly ideological and focused off at the interest of American capitalism. Right. Uh, you can also look into pop culture, what kind of pop culture is being used, right? Uh, to uh, hyper commercialization of pop culture, right? Because it was physically controlled by giant corporations, like similarly to the movie industry, etc. Right? Organized according to structures of mass production, churning out mass products, uh, high commercial system of culture, right? Sell, sold the values, lifestyles, institutions of the American way of life. Right? You are creating and selling the American cultures, right? To other parts of the world. Basically, you are producing uh, a commodifying culture as a product. Uh, what you call, so that people could buy and emulate, right? And then development of technology, right? Become a force of production, informative mode of social organization and control, right? Uh, the system of cultural production, such as film and so on, by commercial interest, controlled by commercial interest, right? and everybody can enjoy or enjoy what film people is high culture, and you know, what you can you know. like, For example, I give you an example, right? Uh, Previously, film was only available for those who can go to the theaters and buy the tickets, which was uh, can be said as costly, right? And then after that, when it was like more of democrat democratized, where right? it comes cheaper, right? Everybody will have access over these products. So therefore, what is associated as high culture, right? The characteristic uh, that can be associated as high culture has totally reduced. Suits, wearing suits, coats, and so on, right? Good suits, right? Um, blazers, and so on. At one point in time, wearing tie and everything is very high culture. Only the elites uh, were, were wearing this attire, right? But however, much later, if you see the bands like Peter, right, they went in and broke the conception of high culture, right? They were starting to wear uh, coats, I mean, suits, and so on, right, to break. Uh, if you see, right, they would like wear suits, but uh, uh, not the formal shoes. It's more of like a, you know, hipsters kind of shoes to break what is known as the high culture. So the value is reduced or totally broken. Some form of resistance in the society. Right? Uh, Herbert Marcus emphasized that technology is a mode of organizing and perpetuating thought or behavior patterns and instrument for control and domination. Right. <clears throat> this technology is used to create, uh, to help the rulers or the powerful society to control and dominate the mass society, right? to uh, uh, retain the status quo in the society. Right. So how is it uh, functioning? Right. Basically, it produces mass culture that habituated individuals to conform the dominant patterns of thought. For instance, like uh, using mass media to say that woman belongs to a uh, kitchen for instance right you use technology right? use advertisements right if you see hundred of advertisement and in each and every advertisement it is the woman who always do uh, who do uh, house chores then it is a pattern of thinking that is being instilled upon the society right so that is what we are saying as uh, instrument for control and domination so Habermas later, Jürgen Habermas later come in with the concept of public sphere, right? Uh, 
how bourgeois society in the late 18th and 19th century was distinguished by the rise of public sphere that stood between civil society and the state which mediated between public and private. Right? Uh, in this is a time where uh, the public sphere in the context of uh, newspapers, right? Uh, later television and all these things, right? This public sphere was controlled by uh, the elites, by the rich and the state, right? Instead of public opinion, the public sphere was only dominated by the ideas that were used to, to uh, discuss and disseminate are those uh, are the ideas that conforms to the dominant ideas in the society, right? So mass media as an oppressive, as a consciousness shaping institution, right? Oppressive in the sense that it uh, legitimizes certain thinking. It creates what is to be think and what is to be thought and so on. That part of the public sphere comes into being in every conversation where private individuals assemble to form a public body, right? It mediates between society and the state. Conversation is crucial to the formation of what we call the public. Right? Here the public sphere works as as a platform where you can have conversation between the public and the state. Right now we have plenty of platforms like social media, newspapers, online portals, right, and so on and so forth. That works as a public sphere. Previously, maybe it's very it was very limited, right, uh, where individuals can come together to freely discuss and identify societal problems through that discussion, influence political action, right. Uh, previously, we had uh, like town hall sessions, right works as a public sphere where you can interact with your elected representative and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, the bourgeois public sphere made it possible to form a realm of public opinion that opposed state power and the powerful interests that were coming to shape bourgeois society. Right? Here bourgeois public sphere right, was created not to... Uh, it, it was created to challenge uh, the ruling elites, right, uh, the ruling politicians maybe, or you know, state power, right, so that, uh, like, if you see the French Revolution, right, what we call as the bourgeois revolution, right, it created a lot of, demo it was the birth of democracy, for instance, right, uh, no, uh, it was moving towards democracy, right, creating a, a structure, institution for you to debate and discuss, right, but what the ideas were post uh, or introduced in this public realm. It was only uh, that was uh, sporting and conforming to bourgeois ideology, right? Uh, not, and then Habibas notes a transition from the liberal public sphere, which originated in the Enlightenment and the American and French Revolution to a media-dominated public sphere, the currency of what we call manifested capitalism and mass democracy. Right. Uh, Right. Industrialization that under capitalist control have taken over the public sphere, right? That is what being argued, right? Uh, like the media and so on and so forth has been overtook uh, by the capitalist uh, individuals, so companies and so on, right? So industrialization has transformed the public sphere from a side of rational debate into one manipulative consumption and passivity. passivity. Right. Previously, we have an arena, like if you look into the Roman early structures, right, in the French Revolution itself, and the early American society, and so on, right, we have a platform where you can come, like what I say, like, like town hall sessions, right, but now we don't have uh, that opportunity, right, now what is supposed to be a public sphere is somehow controlled totally by uh, the bourgeoisie, right, the rich capitalists. Right. Why and how we have the transformation of public sphere? Process of industrialization has completely changed the system of society, right? As I said, from feudal society and then we move to, uh, sorry, from primitive society, we move to feudal, we have landlord, we have peasants, and then we had uh, the monarchs as well, right, during the feudal system. And then now we are in capitalist society where everything revolves around money, right? It is. Uh, the, the society, the order of society has uh, desperately changed right? uh, ownership by the capitalists and everything. Right? 
right? Uh, so ideology, right? Later we'll also look into ideology, much more detailed under hegemonic type. Uh, so here, Luis Althusser, known for his criticism and conceptualization of Marxism, he came up with the idea of uh, ideology and uh, and rejected the idea of economic determinism, right? Uh, rather than a strict relationship between ideology and economic base of society, where one class imposes its values on another, ideology is a set, dynamic set of practices which all groups and classes participate. Right? Uh, it is not only the uh, the rich and powerful who decides what kind of thinking has to be conformed and practiced in society. According to Althusser, it is all round. Everybody has an equal participation to uh, to to create and reinforce the ideology. Right? Later we'll look into the uh, theory of hegemony, right? Much more detail here. Ideological state apparatus, right? Institutions like religion, patriarchy are, are all reinforced. Are all institutions, agents in society which reinforces certain uh, ideology. Right. Uh, we'll look into the hegemony later on. Right. Uh, so basically, conclu the conclusion is that uh, mass culture, culture produces desires, right? The industries, right? Produce desires, dreams, hopes, fears, longings, as well as an unending desire for consumer products, right? Creating a consumerist culture for you to own that and this, saying that, okay, this would mean I'm happy. This would, this would buying this would mean like now we are buying into new handphones, new uh, houses and so on to show that we are healthy, we are wealthy, happy and everything, right? So Frankfurt School introduced a model that demonstrates a highly commercial technological advanced culture that serves the needs of dominant corporate interests. Right? It basically deduce that uh, everything that is being introduced is to or developed or invented is for the dominant corporate interest, which is to uh, generate profit, right, for them to be richer while the poor remains poor. Right? This play a major role in ideological reproduction and acculturating individuals into the community system. Right. Uh, uh, so, this you can read for yourself. Alright, so that could be it. So next chapter we'll look into hegemony, right? Which is more uh, more comprehensive, I would say, right? Alright, uh, so that would be it. Thank you.